се погласни со тоновите за песимистички расплет на светската економска криза. Колку глобалната економија е во опасност? Како ќе се ефектуира кризата врз македонската економија? Гостин во Маркет 168, економскиот аналитичар кој долги години живе во земјава, Сем Вакнин. Антикризната политика на владата во услови на растечката криза во еврозоната треба да се насочи кон помош на стопанството во освојување нови пазари, сугерираат економистите пред објавувањето на новиот буџет за догодина. По одличните резултати за раст во првиот и вториот квартал, во втората половина од годината се очекува забавување на економијата. Излез за Македонија е да се сврти кон растечките пазари, така наречените БРИК земи, Бразил, Русија, Индија и Кина. Економистите предупредуваат и дека Македонија ќе се соочи со проблем да ги финансира трошоците, со оглед на тоа што расходната страна на буџетот тешко може да се намали, а задолжувањето надвор ќе стане многу скапо, една од опциите при сегашно ниво на трошоците е да се сголема даноците. Каде ја гледам реакцијата на владата? Да пристапи кон преиспитување на ефектите од договорите за слободна трговија и да види можности за нови договори редовно и експресно сервисирање на врските кон приватниот сектор, а доколку ликвидноста тоа го налага, може би треба да се размислува и за привремено враќање на прогресивното одоночување, односно воедување по високи даношни стапки за побогатите граѓани. Кризата во САД и Европа зема замав, а светските економски авторитети не може да се усогласа да најдат најбезболно решение за неизино надминување. Македонија во оваа глобална констелација влегува со собствени предности и слабости. Предности се високото ниво на девизни резерви, кои се во висина на 24% од БДП или 4,5 месечна покриеност на увозот. Имаме умерено ниво на јавниот долг, стабилен банкарски систем со задоволувачка адекватност на капиталот, потоа високи приливи на парични дознаки од нашите работници во странство, кои во кризни услови не се намалија и се разбира ова очекувана депрециација на еврото. Слабостите ги знаеме за земја со толку висока стапка на невработеност и најблага рецесија во Европа и САД ќе биде лош сигнал. Второ, имаме многу голема концентрација на извозот кај трговски партнери кои се директно или индиректно погодени од оваа должничка криза во еврозоната. Во моментот во еврозоната главен проблем е како да се спасат европските банки кои се во голема мера изложени во Грција. Дебатите се во насока дали и кога треба да се докапитализираат банките и како ќе се продолжи со помагањето на Грција, која е соочена со се поизвесен банкрот. Добро, тоа беше во видниот прилог. Добро вечер за мојот гостин, Сем Вакнен, главен и одговорен уредник на Global Politician, кој живее долги години во Македонија и ги знае и глобалните, но и домашните прилики. Thank you for having me. Да почнеме од светската криза. Како оценувате и како гледате на оваа втора фаза од големата криза што започна од 2008 година? I would like to, uh, to take this opportunity to correct a few misconceptions. First of all, there is no global crisis. Countries like Macedonia, like Israel, like uh, China, like Australia, like Canada have never been in a crisis and are not in a crisis right now. Israel is growing nicely, Macedonia is growing nicely, Poland has grown nicely and so on. This is a crisis only of some countries in the European Union and the United States. It's not a global crisis. Second thing, a second uh, misconception about the crisis is that the crisis had two phases. The first phase was in 2008 where there was a banking crisis and now there is a second phase which is a, a crisis of governments, that governments cannot pay back their debts and their bonds. In effect, this is not true. There's only been a one single crisis and it's been going on since 2008 until this very moment. What happened is that banks all over the world gave loans to clients who cannot return the money. So American banks gave loans to homeowners, to mortgages, and these people cannot pay back the money. European banks gave loans to governments, and these clients cannot return the money. Chinese banks gave loans to state-owned companies, and in the next few months, there will be a crisis in China because of debt. So the whole crisis from 2008 to this very day is a banking crisis, only banking crisis. Banks made unwise decisions regarding credits. They gave credits 
to organizations, people, governments who cannot pay back. And the third uh, misconception is that if we solve the Euro crisis, Eurozone crisis, if we, for instance, if we bail out Greece or, or solve the situation with Spain, Portugal, Italy, and so on, then that will be the end of it. That's the, that's the, the, but actually that is not true. Even if tomorrow all these countries were able to pay their debts back and the situation would come down and so on, the, the crisis is going on because the financial system is dead. The financial system throughout the world, from China to the United States, from Europe to, to the Middle East, from all over, the financial system has too many dead loans, bad loans, credits that cannot be paid back. And what this means that the only solution to this crisis is nationalizing the banking system globally. You will see that there will be a third development, four, two additional developments in this crisis. One, there will be a major financial crisis in China shortly. In a matter of a few months, I believe that by the end of this year or beginning of next year, Chinese companies and banks will collapse and there will be a crisis in China very similar to the crisis in the United States in 2008. And secondly, municipalities, uh, obstini, in the United States will not be able to pay back bonds that they have issued together with banks. So we will have another crisis in the United States connected to local government. Crisis is ongoing and will continue another five to ten years because all of us, individuals, companies, governments, municipalities, everyone was taking too much credit and we cannot pay back this credit because we are not growing fast enough. We, we don't have enough. You know, when the banking system is down, banks do not lend money to companies. They do not finance trade. So companies fire people. Fired people don't pay taxes. No taxes, budget deficits. Mm -hmm. Budget deficits, no borrowing. <laughs> borrowing, sovereign debt crisis, etc. This is a, a vicious cycle. Only way to break it is to nationalize all the banks. The first, it will happen in Europe. Europe, in my view, in November, will begin to nationalize the big banks. What would uh, interest me? Uh, Тези стакнавте малко различни од она што се зборува во Вашингтон. Еве ќе позборуваме и за понатаму за банкарската криза. За почетокот прашам исто и какво како расплет очекувате со грчката криза со оглед на тоа што е тоа епицентар на кризата во Европа. First of all it's very comic that Greece is such a problem. Greece uh, the Greece economy is between 2 and 2.6% of the total EU economy. Is uh, like a small village in Macedonia. Yes, it's a very small economy. And had Greece disappeared off the map, the rest of Europe should not have felt it economically. So, but, so what, what, it's not a problem of Greece. Greece can default tomorrow. There will be no serious economic effects. It's a problem of the euro. The euro was constructed badly. And as early as 1997, uh, many analysts, myself included, we were saying that the euro is constructed badly because countries like Greece, Portugal, Spain, and even France, even Italy, will take advantage of the good credit of Germany to borrow cheap. And when you give governments the opportunity to borrow cheap, they borrow a lot, whether they need or don't need. And this is exactly what happened in Greece. And by the way, it's happening in Macedonia. This is exactly what happens in Greece. Greece borrowed way over its needs to finance all kinds of social programs, to afford early pensions, and so on and so forth. Now, the resolution to the Greek crisis is probably relatively simple. Greece will receive the next installment of 8 billion euros next month and uh, will be able to survive up until uh, January, February. Um, the European Union will force banks in France, in Germany, in other places, will force the banks to take a haircut. Haircut means to, to cut off part of the debt that Greece owes them. So the banks will agree to receive 50, 50 well, cents. Uh, for like, a credit, yes, like a bad credit. So they will agree to receive, let's say, 50 or 30 cents on every uh, Greek euro bond. And then the governments of Europe will refinance the banks. They will inject capital into the banks. Yes. Yes. So it will be a three, three, game, three match game. Uh, Greece will pay 30 to 50 cents on its debt, effectively defaulting, but without calling it default. 
the banks will take a huge loss on Greek debts, like Dexia, now the bank in Belgium and France, they will take a huge loss on Greek debt, and Germany and France and other governments will inject capital into the banks, effectively nationalizing. Vilite deka bankite, deka praktično ova kriza na bankite, deka bankite davale duše krediti. Од друга страна, рейтинг агенциите ги оценувале добро тие земји, па веројатно и затоа банките ги оценувале како малку ризични. Дали е само одговорноста на банките или има многу широка одговорност за оваа криза? Еве и според оваа теорија што вие изнесувате. I firmly believe that the entire crisis from A to Z is the fault of the banks. Firmly believe. Of course, many people come to the banks, individuals, corporations, governments and ask for money. It is the job of the bank not to give money. When Greece started to borrow money in a big way, which was 1998 and especially after the year 2000 with the introduction of the euro, when Greece started to borrow money, the, the debt of Greece was already equal to 100% of GDP. You don't lend money to such a country or you lend. But between 2000 and 2010, banks tripled the money that they gave to Greece, tripled. Dexia alone gave 24 billion euros to Greece. Dexia, one single bank, 24 billion. The, you have uh, French banks, you have German banks who, who have given to Greece 10% of their capital, 15% of their capital. It's completely insane. To Greece, Greece is 2% of the EU economy. 2% has no growth. Do you know that Greece, officially, has been in recession 50% of its existence, is the only country in the world where every second year there is official recession. Because they believe, they believe correctly that uh, if there will be any problem with Greece, Germany will cover the, the debt. There was an implicit euro guarantee. Even though Germany kept saying, no, we will never pay back the debts, there is no mutual guarantee between the countries, there was a stability pact, you know, that uh, countries must maintain the deficit uh, under 3% and so yeah. on. Despite all this, everyone believed that ultimately Germany will pay the bills. And they were right, in effect. Dobro. Uh, Со Шпанија и Италија има исто така еден потенцијален проблем за кој пишува, за кој се зборува и пишува. Тие земји веќе презедува фискални затегања, но и после овие преземени мерки, рейтинг агенциите го намалија, ги намалија оценките за овие земји. Како врасплет расплет таму се очекува со оглед на оние ризици на кои предупредуваат развиените земји и ММФ и Светската банка, дека може да се случи во најлошо сценарио, да се случи каскадно пагење на економијата. Spain and uh, Italy and Portugal, as opposed to Ireland and Greece. Uh, these three countries are examples of psychological contagion, infection, psychological infection, panic, simply, in one word. Market panic and speculators abusing the system to put pressure on specific countries. Spain, for instance, has its debt, its external debt is 64% of GDP. That is one third Greece and one half Italy. Yet Spain is put in the same category like Greece for no reason whatsoever. Um, its fiscal uh, affairs are in good order. It has very nice, well-balanced uh, budget. I mean, with the deficit, but reasonable deficit, manageable deficit. It has a high unemployment because they fired a lot of people from the public administration. They took all the right steps. They are similar to United Kingdom, in effect. The United Kingdom took all the right steps. So. There's no reason to put Greece in the same package. There's no reason to put Portugal or France now is being mentioned and so on. This is result of uh, panic. Now the panic has two components. First, again, the banks. The banks now are refusing to lend money. They're refusing to lend money to companies to, and to individuals. So there is no growth. So there is no tax. So there is no, so there's a budget deficit. And they're refusing to lend money to governments. For instance, Macedonia used to borrow money in the international markets. And now Macedonia cannot borrow money. So it was forced to take money from the IMF under the special facility, which made the IMF very unhappy. And so the banks now are refusing to lend money and we have a credit uh, crunch. The situation now, as far as bank lending is, is two times twice worse than in 2008 and 9 at the height of a crisis. We know that because we have a special financial instrument called credit default swap. 
this financial instrument that is traded all over the all over the world shows us what is the risk in lending and the and the second problem is that is uh, that there are groups of speculators uh, all over the world but especially in Europe groups of speculators who on purpose spread malicious rumors gossip uh, for instance it's well known that the newspaper Spiegel is fed fed by one group that constantly place in Spiegel stories that are intended to destabilize the markets. It's well-known fact among the journalists, constantly. And these rumors feed on themselves. People get panicked, pension funds withdraw money, banks don't give credit, and so on. So it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. In Europe, there are only, there's only one, it, there are only two countries in the situation of, in a truly bad situation. It's Greece and Ireland. Second worst is Italy. Spain, Portugal, and France should not be in the same category at all. And so what will be the, the outcome? As I said in the beginning, I think ultimately what will happen is that they will establish a giant fund between two and three trillion euros. This fund will be used to do two things. To buy bonds from governments, so governments will issue bonds and not sell them in the market, but sell them directly to the fund. And to nationalize all the major banks in Europe, except British banks. All the other major banks in Austria, in Germany, in Italy, all of them will be nationalized uh, with capital from this fund. Worse cannot be. Jednostavno zemeno, najgolemi dobitnici profitiri najgolemi gubitnici od ova kriza. The biggest, uh, the, the crisis, as I said, is limited to United States and some countries in European Union. We don't have crisis anywhere else in the world. The rest... Yes. 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 Предвидувањето да на глобално ниво обично по плаките на сати Европа се дека Кина има пари а не ги дава не, не го поттикнува извозот на нивните економии. Yes, it's a common mistake to believe that if you have a lot of foreign exchange reserves and China has 3.2 trillion dollars in reserves, if you have a lot of reserves you're safe. It's a common mistake. In 1997, 1998, the countries with the biggest foreign exchange reserves were in Asia. And there was the famous Asian crisis, which almost destroyed the global economy. So crisis has nothing to do with foreign exchange reserves. The, the problem of China is that the banks of China made very bad loans to municipalities and especially to state-owned companies in order to maintain the level of employment to prevent social unrest. So it's all political, totally political. Very similar to Macedonia, by the way. Totally, all economic thinking is totally politicized. So there will be a crisis in China. But at this stage, it's a prediction. Right now, except the United States and some countries in Eastern Europe, the rest of the world is growing. There is growth in Brazil, in Israel, in Macedonia, in Russia, in, in uh, China. Everywhere there's growth. Australia, everywhere is growing. So the, what we are seeing is a shift from West to East. The crisis symbolizes the movement of economic power from the West to the East. We are in a very, very important epoch in history where the power that the economic power, financial power, financial centers, economic ab ability to borrow, ability to finance trade, all of them shifted to... There are some signs that the East is becoming far more important than the West. For example, of every hundred new American products, films, electronic products, cars, of every hundred new products in 1960, 95 or 98, depending on the year, were launched first in the United States. Today, of every hundred American products, 73 products are first launched in China, India, and so on. So, the American... So, global rasplet, you think, will be the economic weakening in the Yes, this is, happening, this is definitely happening now. Definitely happening now. Yes, this is what I'm saying. That means that the end result would be very long. If you have a look that is longer than 20 years, if you have a look of, of 1,000 years, let's look at the history of 1,000 years, for, for, or even 2,000 years, or even 4,000 years. For more than 3,800 years, 
the center of economic power was not in the West. It was in the East. China was the center of economic power. Babylon, Sumeria, you know, you name it. But all the economic power was in the Middle East, in Asia, mm, and so American on. American even <laughs> Yes, America was not even established. Mm. And Europe was a catastrophic place. In the year 1600, England was one of the poorest countries in the world, and so on. So, so it's new. The power of the West is new. It's only two, 300 years old. It's aberration. It's deviation from history. Historically, the power is in the East. So there was this move of, because of colonialism, mercantilism, and we are going back to how history always has been. Интересни тези кажувата. Пред да преминеме на ефектите што се очекуваат врз Македонија, уште сака да ја прашам околу неизбалансираниот раст. Овој неизбалансиран раст сеа што пости во светот, ги споменавте Бразил, Индија, Кина, на сметка на САТ и Европската унија. Какви проблеми може да додадат или да одземат на кризата во што велите во банкарскиот сектор? I think there are I, I don't regard it as a problem at all. Like, like it was not a problem that Europe and the United States controlled the world economy over the last hundred years. It didn't create any problem. It's not a problem that... Значи, да има по-избалансиран раз, не би го решило... Не би я разрешило оваа криза. It's not a problem. And it will not solve the crisis. Because I told you the crisis has nothing to do with the with East. It's a, it's a Western crisis. It's the downfall of the West. That's the way the West is dying. It's like a disease. The, the West is dying economically. What will happen, I think, is not a problem, but two historical developments, two historical developments. First of all, there will be what I call reverse colonialism, or more precisely, reverse mercantilism. During the last 400 years, countries in Africa, in, by the way, Africa is also a growth potential, has huge growth potential. I think in 50 years, Africa will be more important than Europe. But uh, countries in Africa, countries in Asia and so on in the past, in the last 200 years, were sending raw materials to the West. The West was processing the raw materials and selling the products back to the East. So there was raw materials coming to the West, finished products coming to the East. And this system was called colonial mercantilism. Now, the process is reversed because the East has more money than the West. So the process is reversed. The West is sending raw materials to the East, and the East is sending finished products to the West. Oh, uh, wheat, corn, agricultural products, the biggest seller of agricultural products is America, United States. The biggest seller of uh, minerals and so on is Russia, uh, European Union. So all the Sugovini, all the raw materials yeah. are coming from the West, and who is selling, what, what products are we buying? We're buying products from China. We're buying products from Taiwan. Да, тоа е веќе со години. Пред малку ве прашав, може би, еве не беше прецизно прашањето за добитниците и губитниците од оваа криза. Мислев на избалансираност и околу богатите и сиромашните. Со оглед на тоа што актуелни се овие протести на Волл Стрит за избалансираност, за поголем баланс, се смета нели дека нели богатите многу земаат од сиромашните, сиромашните стануваат се по-сиромашни. Каков ќе биде расплетот од оваа криза во однос на тој дисбаланс? Дали богатите ќе станат уште по-богати, а сиромашните уште по-сиромашни? Капитализм е built on inequality. The big engine of capitalism is inequality. This country, Obama, Obama is trying to revolutionize the, the spirit of capitalism in the United States by making it more European. But he will fail. Because the United States is established on the ethos of inequality. On the ethos that anyone can be far richer than the neighbor if only he tries hard enough. It's an American dream. The engine of capitalism is inat, spite, jealousy, envy, and the wish to be more, the wish to be like your neighbor. So if you take away that, capitalism dies, in effect. And what people don't uh, realize is that inequality is highest in the United States and highest historically also in the United States right now, except the 1920s. But there is huge inequality in Sweden, enormous inequality in France and very big inequality in the United Kingdom. And in Israel, you see the demonstrations in Israel, and so on and so forth. Wherever there is market economy, there is inequality as the engine. And inequality has grown dramatically three times more in China. So we cannot take inequality away. The losers of the crisis will be, will be people with old skills. 
Another mistake that people make, they think that the crisis affects everything. That's not true. For instance, this year, American companies had the highest profits in history. This year. The highest profits in history for American companies was this year. Last year, American banking system had the highest profits in history. So how can we reconcile these enormous profits, enormous, by historical standards, enormous profits, with uh, unemployment, let's say? Because the companies now are using employees from outside their America, and they are using automation. And so the big losers will be the workers, the working class. <inaudible> yes, the working class will lose. This is the death of the working class, trade unions, all this is... The working class has been dying already 20 years. Since the fall of communism, since the fall of socialism, the working class is dying and will continue to die. And the, the big winners will be the people who know finances, financiers, bankers, speculators, brokers. These will be the huge winners because the main product of modern economies is symbols, not agriculture not manufacturing, not minerals, not cars, not juice, nothing. The main product of, of the economy is symbols. You can have symbols on a computer, you can have symbols in the form of money. In 2007 was the first year in history that the output of symbolic activities, information processing, outstripped was more than output of real products in the United States. First year. So we are moving into abstract economy. And people who can manipulate abstract figures, abstract words, abstract people who deal with text, people who deal with money, people who deal with numbers, they will win. People who deal with machinery, people who deal with, uh, you know, they are dead, dead in the water. Добре да се вратиме на Македонија. Како оваа криза сметате дека ќе се одрези врз Македонија? На почетокот кажавте дека Македонија не е во криза, иако некои неофицијални информации се дека извозот паднал на крајот на летото драматично, со оглед на тоа што кој Европа е во криза, веројатно ќе се намали побарувачката и сите анализи се дека Македонија би била погодена, па дури и нашите власти тоа го предвидуваат. No, I didn't say Macedonia is not in crisis. I said Macedonia GDP is growing. Whether we believe it or not is a different question, and what is the reason it is growing is a different question. I think GDP in Macedonia is growing mainly because of government spending, especially on construction sector. Real private sector, I don't think, is growing so much. But definitely you cannot compare the situation in Macedonia, let's say, to the situation in Greece. Or da. so it's definitely there's no acute da. crisis. What effect can you expect? The global crisis, or the crisis in Europe, more, more precisely, is a, is a huge opportunity for Macedonia. If the economic leadership of Macedonia will regard it as opportunity. Unfortunately, the economic leaders of Macedonia, namely Guevski and Stavrisky, were consistently wrong about the global crisis from beginning to end. If you analyze the statements, if you analyze their, they were all the time wrong, at, at the beginning, in the middle, at the end. <laughs> so I cannot trust these people to lead Macedonia to take advantage of the crisis. But assuming that somehow they will acquire the necessary knowledge and expertise and, possibility and analytic possibility, the crisis represents opportunities for Macedonia. Consider, for instance, banking. A lot of money will escape from European countries. Germans are already transferring money outside of Germany, probably 2 billion euros a month. Italians are transferring between 1.4 billion and 2.5 billion a month, and so on. It is believed that the total capital escaping Europe, escaping the, the sick parts of Europe, is about 150 billion a year, a year. Now, a lot of this capital is looking for places with proper banking system, reasonably safe and stable, but places which will provide sick, um, uh, privacy, uh, secrecy, and offshore amenities, offshore possibilities. So a lot of this money is going to Lebanon, Cyprus, Montenegro, and so on. Macedonia can position itself as a totally legal banking offshore center, deregulated banking, uh, wealth management services, private banking services. It can, uh, the banking system can revolutionize itself and offer itself up 
as an offshore banking center. And I believe that a few billions of this money will come to Macedonia. Why not? Добро, тоа се евентуалните можности, а Првичните сега навестување се дека со новиот буџет Македонија би се борела контра овие ефекти од кризата со повторно еден умерен буџетски дефицит кој пак сега би се насочувал кон инфраструктура. Yeah. Дали сметате дека тоа е навремено или за доценто со оглед на тоа што приоритетите предходно беа нели Скопје 2014, во овие 6 години многу малку се напредуваше во тие инвестиции. Дали тие навистина можат ќе бидат навремени и дали можат да ги намалат ефектите од кризата? As I said, a proper leadership would take advantage of the take advantage of a crisis and use the opportunities to build Macedonian agriculture, Macedonian banking, Macedonian transit uh, possibilities, and so on. This government, or the governments under Gruevski, prefer a Keynesian approach to to the crisis. Keynesian approach means tax more, spend more. So the budget as a share of GDP has grown dramatically. Spending has grown dramatically, borrowing has grown, has grown dramatically, and budget deficits are where they are. This also, of course, has impact on the, on the trade uh, deficit. Now, what I want to say is that there is disagreement among economists. I cannot, I cannot say the government is wrong. That's the wrong way to go about it, because there is a big group of eco important economists. Што смета дека кензианскиот модел е исправен. Но едно е модел, а друго е имплементација. Ако со повеќе пари во економијата се обидувате да надминате кризата, но тие ги инвестирате во објекти како Скопје 2014, што ќе генерира трошаци, е различно од тоа да се инвестира во патна и железничка инфраструктура. Што до сега беше, нели со забавена динамика, не е уште гасификацијата 6 години се зборува, не е починат проектот, нити патиш Веројатно повторно ќе биде проблем финансирањето на буџетскиот дефицит. Минатата година вие имате, вие имавте еден напис, артикал за земените пари од ММФ, што беше оценет од страна на ММФ, односно јавно не го кажа во таа форма, но апсолутно беа изненадени што Македонија не го искористи инструментот за оваа намена. Сега ќе бидат уште потешки условите на надворешниот пазар ако се случи криза. Кој ќе биде можноста за Македонија да се финансира, да го финансира буџетскиот дефицит? To finance the budget deficit, there are basically three options. Option number one is to increase taxation or or collect more taxes. That's option number one. Дали може сега владата на пример да рече повторно не можеме да се задолжиме со евробрзници се ги земат и преостанатите средства од ММФ. Nothing much is left of that facility. Nothing much is left. So it will not be sufficient. They can finance it either by increasing taxes or or collecting more taxes. Uh, that's one way. They can borrow. Uh, they still have funds in the European Union, regional funds and so on. They have funds in the EBRD, they have funds and so on. Borrow to some extent. IMF, you mentioned, the World Bank, they're borrowing and so on. And uh, the third uh, option is, of course, to cut the budget deficit, to rebalance the, uh, the budget, which I suspect this is what will happen. Finally. Да се намали буџетскиот дефицит. I think so. Finally, they will rebalance the budget. They will, I believe, they will finally be be forced to cut some of the some of the budget. But uh, but you are right that the priorities of the government are essentially wrong. Um, government spending as an engine to get a country out of a recession, out of a crisis, is an acceptable method in economic science. You have uh, economists like Paul Krugman who fully support it. But then the question is what you spend the money on. The money should be spent on infrastructure projects with a yield, with a profit in the future that covers the cost of the money. The money should be spent on small and, business, small and medium business enterprises. The money should be spent on increasing exports. The money should be spent on reorienting exports to new countries because the European Union as a market is dying. The money should be spent on re-educating people, reskilling them. The, there, there is a list of known priorities, you know, that, uh, that and the, unfortunately the government is placing too much money on projects which have no yield or profit in the future. The, Macedonia doesn't need sculptures, it needs factories. Macedonia doesn't need big government, it needs clever government. 
Да, но таа инвестиција се покажува многу поволна по владата, по имиджот на владата. Јас ги разгледувам од политичкиот барометар на Брима Галу последните податоци, каде што покажуваат значително зголемување на оптимизмот. Еве, на пример, ако во април 28% од граѓаните сметале дека во правилна насока се движи земјата, сега сметаат дури 42% и за економијата. Значи, од, во април се сметало значи, дека е многу по-лоша економската ситуација, одо што сега во септември што се е некоја половина година разлика. На вистина ли толку за 6 месеци ни тргна во економијата? И се смени перцепцијата на граѓаните? Но, no, вкорсно. There is a there is a sub field in economics. It is known as expectations management, and there are, there are many theories about how to manage the expectations of the population regarding inflation, regarding economic growth, and so on. Today, in modern economics, behavioral economics, we know that expectations translate later into real economic facts. So, if the citizens expect low inflation, there will be low inflation. If the citizens expect high growth, they will hire more people. And there will be high growth and so on. So I think what the government is doing is trying to manage expectations because they have no other tool. They don't have, they cannot borrow money. Remittances are going down from abroad. Uh, they cannot really cut the budget without provoking social unrest. They, they lost most of their tools. They don't have monetary tools because the euro is fixed in Macedonia and they will not devalue. They will not even have a flexible exchange rate. So they don't have monetary tools. They don't have fiscal tools. They are left with one type of tool, psychological tools. They are trying to brainwash and manipulate the population with the hope that optimism will translate to gr economic growth. According to economic theory, it might happen. I don't think it might be successful. We don't know. А добро, дали тогаш овој проект 2000, Скопје 2014 им помогна во тоа? Со оглед на тоа што еве откако се промовираат објектите, значително се сголеми, се сголемија позитивните I don't think I don't think the main I don't think the main motivation of Skopje 2014 is economic. Main motivation is nationalistic, you know, pride, history, nostalgia, false history, true history, whatever. Како тоа успева кај Македонија? This is nothing to do with economics. It's simply a waste of economic resources, scarce economic resources. I don't think there's a single economist in the world who would say that this is a good thing. Definitely, it's a bad thing economically. However, as a prime minister, Gruevski, for instance, has, a, has many priorities, some of them economic, some of them not economic. Maybe he thinks that cohesion of the people, unity, what he calls unity, uh, lack of criticism and so on are very important at this stage and he wants to uh, he, he puts emphasis on that not on the economy and he sacrifices something from the economy to achieve that <laughs> yes i don't think this government has very strong economic uh, impulses but again i i want uh, to emphasize that democracy is not condition for economic growth we have many countries which are not democratic at all and they have the highest growth. Како тогаш оваа ситуација ќе се одрази врз економијата во иднина? Значи како ова зато што зборувате за растечки национализам, тоа го детектираат и развиените земји во сите извештаи и во извештаите нели на меѓународни медиуми како CNN. Значи како тој растеч каде ќе одведе тој растечки национализам и оваа политика Македонија во економска насока во наредните години? Depends how this nationalism is is uh, is uh, develops. If it develops into xenophobia, hatred of foreigners, hatred of, uh, of the outside world, regarding everyone as your enemy, uh, isolation, Enver Hoxha type <laughs> country, then of course you will suffer economically horribly. Because Macedonia is 100% integrated into the trade structure of the EU, 100% integrated into the, the trade structure of the world. Financi financial system is not so integrated, but even financial system is 87% owned by foreign banks. You need foreign investors, you need foreigners. So if nationalism becomes xenophobia, you will suffer, like Serbia suffered, like other countries suffered. If nationalism just becomes pride, unity, I mean positive nationalism, then it, it may not have a bad economic effect. Example, of course, is China. Yeah, no, China. Unit, uh, se podrazbira ako единствено и само ако е прифатите uh, идеологијата и сите ставови и сите проекти на таа влада. I wrote Дали може тамо тука I да се постигне единство со оглед на тоа што некако yeah. uh, се чини дека е поделено на населението? I published a, a column in uh, Plus Info, MK, in the website in which I said that uh, having observed Macedonian society for the last 16 years, 
and being a foreigner, so I have an outside position. I see very worrying developments in Macedonian mentality, and these developments are the direct outcome of government policies. I see that Macedonians are becoming xenophobic, they are becoming unnecessarily aggressive, they do not, they have resistance to learning, they don't want to learn, they regard the West as a complete failure, so there's nothing they can learn from the West, you know, the East is right, the West is wrong. They, these developments are not good, economically not good. Forget now nationalism. Economic, they will have economic consequences that will transform you into a second Albania, but Albania before 1997, not, not today's Albania. If you want to be an isolated country which believes, uh, believes in, in all kinds of myths, builds sculptures instead of factories and hates foreigners, and then you're on the right way. If you want to get integrated into the global system, not necessarily Europe, but the global system, then you ought to reconsider what's happening to your mentality and what the government is, is telling you. And you ought to adopt and embrace criticism. Because criticism is important. Feedback is important. Without it, you cannot correct your path. Without it, you cannot reach true decisions which will lead. Но да се развие критичката мисла потребни се независни медиуми што тука се стиснува просторот во последно време. А единствено критичката мисла може да ја води земјата во прогрес. А тука ако се удри, многу може би и како во други слични ситуации кога се наоѓале земји. Luckily we have the internet. Do you know that for each reader of a newspaper there are three readers on the internet? Luckily we have the internet. And we are seeing very worrying signs about the internet also because the Mevere and other structures are trying to put their hands on the internet as well. That's worrying. Uh, foreign journalists are now accredited. You need a license and so on. So there are worrying developments, definitely. There has been recently a mission of uh, International Press Institute, IPI, sent a mission here, fact-finding mission, because they think that uh, media freedom in Macedonia is dead and they are very worried. But again, I want to emphasize, Democracy is not a condition for economic growth. Of the 10 fastest growing economies in the world, six are dictatorships. It's not a condition. It's not a condition. What is condition is openness, to be open. So China welcomes foreign investors, welcomes foreigners, welcomes uh, many of these countries have foreigners in positions of power. For instance, foreigner chief of customs, foreigner chief of Uprava Zavni Prikhodi, foreigner. So they, they open themselves up. They realize that they are backward and they need some help, some knowledge from the outside and so on. Macedonia has a problem that it is becoming more and more nationalistic and more and more closed to outside uh, input. Јас ви благодарам крајот на емисијата и на кој интересна дискусијата и можеме и уште да разговараме. Ви благодарам што бевте гостин во Маркетскиот шеф. Ви благодарам и вам почитувани гледачи што бевте со нас во овие 45 минути и вашите сугестии ке може да ги испратите на нашата имејл адреса. Пријатна вечер.